All right, just start with a few comments here. I think, um, you know, watching the film here for a couple of days, um, you know, we got our hands full. It's a very good uh, football team, uh, very well coached. Um, you know, Coach Fickle's done a very good job of building toughness in this program. I think it's a veteran group. Um, I think on offense, they're led by their quarterback and, and, and the running back. They both play really, really hard. They're tough players. Um, they've won a lot of games there. So, um, you know, they're, they're, uh, they, they bring different things to the table that we've got to be ready for. And then on defense, uh, very, very sound uh, in terms of their scheme. Guys play really hard, run to the ball. And uh, they did a great job uh, last week and, and got a win against a Power 5 team. So um, new challenge this week. Got a lot of respect for, for, for Coach Fickle and what he's built down there. I think that's a very strong program and in uh, great shape. And so we know they're going to come in here hungry. And uh, being in the same state, we know that means a lot. So, um, you know, we're up for the challenge, but um, you know, getting ready for it as we get into Saturday. Having been able to digest the film, what stood out to you about Justin's performance, good and bad? Yeah, like I said, uh, after the game, I, I think it was right watching the film was that he uh, he played well in terms of game management, uh, didn't try to do stuff uh, that wasn't there. There was some times where we did get that three-man rush, and uh, he didn't force it, got us going, and those, dr those drives that we did end up scoring later on, it was because, um, you know, he kind of kept us on schedule and uh, didn't try to force the ball in there. I thought he did a good job there. Um, you know, a few things, you know, reads, a few protection things we got to clean up. But, again, the more experience he has, the better he's going to be. Front row left. Mitch? Can, can you talk about what you're going to have to do with him this week to get him better? I mean, what are you specifically working on in practice to get him where he, where he needs to be? Uh, just the offense. I mean, there's, there's a lot that we do, and there's a lot that goes into our offense uh, in the run game. Uh, there's a lot of reads. There's, there's things that happen pre-snap. There's things that happen post-snap. There's decisions that need to be made in terms of whether he gives the ball, pulls the ball, whether he throws the ball in a perimeter a bubble game or something like that. And then in the pass game, there's there's a ton that goes into that. You know, Are we into the right route? Uh, the protection calls, the decisions uh, in terms of progressions, uh, the location of the ball, his technique, uh, all those things come into play. Uh, Fred, right, Austin. Ryan, how, how well did that defensive performance match up with what you envisioned when you hired these, these four guys? Yeah, I think the first quarter, um, it was exactly the way I envisioned, just both sides of the ball. And then um, it, was, it was just okay, I thought, later on. You know, I thought the second quarter, defense still played good. Offense was just okay. Um, you know, a few funky looks in there. But, but for the most part, I thought we started out that way. Now we've got to be, be able to sustain it for 60 minutes and, and play well in through the second half. And, and that's the challenge. But, but I, do, I do think that we saw some guys flying around. I thought you saw... Some hard tackling early on. I think you saw guys run into the ball with great effort, and that's what we want. And you spent a couple, pre you know, press conferences during training camp talking about the turnovers, and you seem to really want to clean that up. And then you go have two of them in the opener. Is that does that keep you up now at night, or how does that? How do you evaluate that moving forward? I thought overall we we, we handled it pretty good. I know you know two turnovers is no, we want zero, but the the bubble one is a kind of a funky one. Uh, we'll clean that up. The other one is inexcusable, you know, the one that J.K. spins on and the ball pops out. So that, that cannot happen, and we, we have to get that fixed. But I thought in terms of throwing game, the receivers catching the ball, you know, for the most part, the ball, when you look at it on film, it was secured. It was locked away. Um, it wasn't like it was loose all over the place and balls are flying all over the place like I've seen, you know, in some of the games and opening games. But that doesn't mean anything in this week. You know, we've we got to get to zero turnovers because that's what the plan to win says, and we've got to follow that. So, um, you know, it'll still be an emphasis this week and moving forward. Obviously, J.K. has been doing this a long time. He knows that that's important. Is there? Do you have to have a conversation? Do you do different drills with them? What do you? How do you proceed with a guy like that? No, I think you just learn right there. You know, when he spun out of that, he puts himself. At, you know, he's a high exposure, and anytime you spin, um, you're you're putting yourself at you know an, ex, an exposed. And I think more. Uh, you know, we just t teach him on that end. It's pretty good. But for the most part, when he was running, that ball was locked away. I think he. He was crushed when it happened. Um, you know, you could see it in his body language, and um, you know, I, I know J.K. He's going to bounce right back from that and make sure it's not, it doesn't happen again. Ryan, uh, for, for any young quarterback, how how difficult of a learning curve is it to, to sort of like not get forced off your spot in the pocket quickly and maybe I don't know, not react to pressure that's not totally there yet? And, and is it any more difficult to, to get a feel for that when? You are athletic and think you can make things happen with your legs. Yeah, I, I think there's a long answer to that. I think um, learning to play in the pocket is something that um, happens uh, over time. Uh, playing seven on seven, uh, going to different camps, um, that, that's nothing like playing the game of football. And you find more and more that quarterbacks are so used to playing in seven on seven situations that it's very unrealistic. You see low, um, 
you know, in terms of like their elbow being low and they're not throwing the ball at the right level because there's a line in front of you and you have to see over that line. And when you're athletic, you find ways to survive. How do you survive? You get yourself out of trouble and run. Uh, somebody who's maybe not as athletic, they have to figure out ways to survive. And the way that they survive is by getting the ball out on time, having check downs, being accurate with the football, and getting a rhythm. Um, when you have somebody who can escape the pocket, you have to figure out ways to keep him in the pocket and train him the right way so that he feels comfortable when he's in there. And I think um, from day one of spring practice to where Justin's in right now is considerably uh, different. And we have to keep building on that. But he stood in there and took some shots. The, the one he threw to Chris Olave, I mean, he took it right in the chin. And I thought he threw one heck of a ball down the field. Um, the, the touchdown to Rucker, he got hit right in the mouth. He stood in there. That's that's playing in the Big Ten, and that's what it's going to be like moving forward. And then it, it did seem like Florida <coughs> started bringing a lot of pressure on you guys after you got up big 28 nothing or wherever it was. Um, just how do you think the offensive line sort of handled that when you sort of throwing different looks at you? I actually, after watching the film, uh, was more uh, pleased with the way the offensive line blocked than I thought coming off the field. There was some funky looks. I thought there was uh, more yards to be had in the run game than that was actually there. And again, I, some of that goes back to you see the same defense over and over again. The run's kind of hitting the same gaps over and over again. You get into a rhythm that way. And uh, they, although it wasn't clean and they did try to bring a bunch of stuff at us, I thought for the most part we moved them. You know, uh, Jonah Jackson had nine knockdowns in the game, which is significant. Uh, you know, I think Josh Myers had six knockdowns. I mean, those guys played with effort. Um, and we got to do a better job of finding the hole and making yards after contact. That, that's the bottom line. And so um, I know Coach Alford and the running backs are going to be working on that this week. Uh, Coach, some coaches spend a lot of time discussing history with their team because they imagine it gives them perspective and motivation. Some figure, boy, these guys have enough on their plate with what we give them about this week's game. Where are you on that spectrum? I'd like to talk to the team about where we are. So um, on Tuesdays, I'll have a team meeting today. We'll have one at 2.30 and, you know, let them know where we're at. You know, talk to them about the team that, that's here. Uh, like you said, you know, you don't want to just fill their head full of, full of nonsense. But at the same time, I do think that they need to know where they are. Um, there's a lot that goes in their minds. There's a lot that, uh, you know, on their phones and social media and everything that, that fills their brain. They have academics. They have all their, their stuff that they're learning and a game plan. But they also need to know the bigger picture. And this week, we, we got a team who's coming in there with a chip on their shoulder, and they want to prove something to us. So, um, so yeah, on a weekly basis, we'll go through all that. Like, for this week, will you discuss what Luke Fickle meant when he was at Ohio State? Marcus Freeman, John Tenuta, their ties to the Buckeyes. Do you get that into the pit? No. I mean, I think they know that and, you know, mention what, the, what it would mean to that staff and how hungry they are, but, but try not to, like I said, get, it, get too far into the details of things, yeah. Focus really on what matters, you know. Coach, I think that you uh, I made it clear that J.K. is going to be the bell cow of this offense. I was wondering, do you have an impression on how Master Teague ran the ball in the second half? I know he's banged up. Um, and do you have any idea of giving him more carries down the stretch? Because a lot of people thought he looked well. Yeah, no, um, I thought Master ran well. Um, unfortunately, Master's been out for a bunch of the, the spring and then um, and then for preseason. You know, So he hasn't practiced like... Um, you know, a starter should or, or even a backup should. And so because of that, you know, that stunted his progress. Um, but that being said, when he was in the game, I thought he ran hard. I thought, um, you know, he, he saw stuff. It wasn't always perfect, but he, he took care of the ball and he was physical and, you know, he carried some defenders with him. You know, when there was contact at three, you know, he was he was finishing them at six and seven. So I thought that was a good start and, and that was definitely, fl you know, a flash for us on offense. Coach, uh, sticking with the running back, uh situation, but just the recruiting scenario or situation. Um, when you have a class that's this full, um, but there's one specific position where you thought you had some guys and they ended up going elsewhere and you get into the season months and this is your first time going through this. Um, what's your take on the desperation to try to fill a position when things don't really go the way you planned and, and how do you attack just one specific position when the rest of the, the class is basically full? So we're, we're, you know, we're full right now at running back. Um, you know, you have Steele, you have Marcus, you have Demario, you have Master, and then you have J.K. So we don't, we don't have room for another guy. Now that being said, you know, we're always going to recruit a running back, and and we've we've we have recruited running backs, and we're going to continue to recruit running backs. And so what we have to do is we have to make sure we're evaluating this fall to see what what comes up here this fall. And uh, there are some guys that we're going to continue to recruit. 
and you know see where the season goes and when it gets into December where we're at. But right now we have five running backs, and that's that's all we can have uh, in terms of our numbers. And so um, you know we'll see how things shake out. We'll see who's on our recruiting board getting into December. But we're going to continue to look at guys, you know, guys that we've evaluated, reevaluate, and then kind of see where we're at as we get into November, December. Nobody goes pro, you don't take one. Right. So if somebody went pro, then we'd be short one. Yeah. Third row left hand, Ryan. Cincinnati's defense was among the better in the country last year. They had a good start to the season last week. What are the things that you see when you're watching them on film that you think makes them successful? Well, I, again, I think they're well coached. They're disciplined. Uh, they play hard. Um, you can tell that you know they they are a veteran group in terms of you know they, they play with older guys. Um, you know, I don't know how many of their guys have redshirted, but but there's there's quite a few seniors and some grad transfers and, and some older guys that have played football there before, and so. Anytime you have older, you know, men in your program, it matters. And I think again, it comes down from the top. I think that they're, they're, uh, you know, they're not going to give you a game. You have to go win the game and take it from them. And I think that's on both sides of the ball. They're not going to give up a lot of big plays, and they're also going to run the ball and not turn the ball over on offense. Luke Fickle and Marcus Freeman are both guys who are from here. Have you had much interaction with those guys at all? Do you know, do you know them at all? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know Marcus as well. I've had a couple conversations with him, and, and a lot of respect for what he's done. And and obviously what he did here, and then uh, and then Luke, uh, tremendous amount of respect for him. I've I've gotten to know Luke a little bit and his family, but um, but not a ton. Um, had several conversations even even this summer, but um, again, a tremendous coach and what he's done here speaks for itself. Fourth row left, Brian, you just mentioned the way that, that Cincinnati runs the ball. We've watched Michael Warden play for years in the state of Ohio. He's an interesting style of back in that he can run to and through contact. When you're preparing for a back like that, how does it change defensively the way you evaluate an opponent and, and what that can represent in the game? Yeah, I mean, again, you don't prepare any different, but I think you need to know what people's strengths and weaknesses are. You know, there's certain guys that, um, you know, like a Rondell Moore at Purdue, you know, he's a little bit more of a shifty, you know, short area quickness guy. Then there's the bigger, you know, backs maybe from, you know, Michigan State. And then you have different styles of backs. And I think some of that has to do with the type of runs that they're going to see. But then also, you know, how are you going to get the guy down? And how is the game going to progress? And, and, and um, you know, I think th this style of back is somebody that gets stronger as the game goes on. So we, we need to get one guy has got to be there, but then two and three got to make sure it's a gang tackle and we get them on the ground. You mentioned uh, the, the shots that Justin took in the pocket. You also took several running the ball. Yep. Just were, were you uncomfortable with how – Often he was hit Saturday. Yeah, night. yeah, yeah. I didn't. I, you know, th those shots should not have been taken, and uh, so we, that's that's some of the stuff we're talking about in terms of cleaning up. I thought he did a pretty good job of getting down when he was out there scrambling. You know, he didn't take too many shots and made pretty good decisions in the run game. And um, you know, I thought one of the times he took a sack, he didn't need to. He could have thrown that away. But that's all part of the learning curve. You can't replicate any of that stuff in practice. And uh, so he's learning, learning when to slide, learning when to get down, learning when to throw the ball away, and. Um, you know, there's going to be times where he has to be physical. And if it's, you know, third and four and he's got to get that first down, he's got to do that. Um, but he's also got to learn that this is a long season. Uh, second row left, Steven. Last year, because of some of the limitations you had at quarterback, especially running the ball, you, know, you guys kind of built in some packages for, like, Tate Martell, and especially in the red zone situation. You guys also struggled in the red zone, maybe a little bit more than you would have wanted to. This year, you scored twice in the red zone, and you've got a guy you don't necessarily have to take off the field in those situations is, I guess, is there a benefit to having a guy like that in comparison to what Dwayne was? Uh, yeah, I, I think he does bring a different uh, skill set to the table. Um, not that we, we didn't really do that down there yet the other day. We still brought in two, three tight ends and, and uh, got big and ran the ball, and I thought that was good. We need to do that. We need to set that uh, precedent that we're going to, uh, you know, be physical on guys, be able to move people. Uh, and then you know throw play action pass. That that's a that's a huge part of this thing. And so, uh, but but Justin does also bring that athleticism to the table. And um, so that'll be something that we're going to use moving forward. But having the ability to do both, I think, is really important. Um, I think it's hard in a quarterback to rely on him um, when it comes down to running the ball to, to 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 you know carry that load. And so you know we do have two, three, four tight ends that we can put in a game, and we need to get those guys in there and, and let them move people. Are you happy that I guess you don't have to take the quarterback off the field this year to be able to do that? That's For sure. Yeah. Fourth row middle, Patrick. Uh, Ryan, going back to the questions about Luke, just as you've kind of familiarized yourself with Ohio State history, how much does he come up given you know he was a player here for four or five years, came back as a coach, came back again as a coach, worked his way up. 
how much have you learned about him in your kind of study of Ohio State history? Yeah, no, um, you know, a, a good amount. You know, he's he's got a decorated history in terms of what he did, you know, off the field with, with his wrestling career and then and then what he did as a player and, and then as a coach and, you know, winning a national championship and what he did with some of the players here in recruiting and, um, you know, his, his uh, relationship with Mike Vrabel and all those guys that he was with and, um, you know, what he's done, you know, in the community with – um, with some of the charity work he's done. So again, um, you know, a lot of respect and, and uh, a lot of people talk about him when, when uh, you know, you talk about some of the, the Ohio State greats. You mentioned the tight ends in the red zone, but you talked all off season about that was one of the most improved groups, one of the more veteran groups. Obviously we saw Jeremy involved in the passing game like you talked about. Is that kind of a microcosm of what you expect from that position group? Or was that more of a, a matchup thing with Florida Atlantic? A little bit of both. Yeah, a little bit of both. Um, you know, I thought that fit well in that game. Um, and, you know, that that's a little bit of a different feel, you know, lining up uh, and, and trying to snap it with 30 seconds on the shot clock every play as opposed to lining up in two tight ends and, and pounding somebody. That's a little bit different. And, again, I, I really think it's important for us to have both identities. And so we're trying to build that identity as we go. And uh, it's not just going to happen overnight. But I think our ability to go in and out of those two different things are, are going to be really good. Yeah, um, the saying in football is that you have to improve the most between game one and game two. How much will you have to improve against UC? Well, significantly, I think. Uh, you know, we, we have to play for a full 60 minutes. You know, the, those first, you know, six, seven minutes or whatever that was was just completely dominant. But, but then the rest of it was just okay. And so, um, you know, we can't take a deep breath after we go up like that. You know, we have to continue to sustain, and then if we, you know, in that, in that game, if we, we take some of the starters out, that's the coach's decision, you know. And so we have to we have to make sure we're putting our pedal to the metal and finishing off the games. But uh, but we're gonna have to play better. I mean, this is a really good team uh, who's won a lot of games, and and they just beat a, a Pac-12 team, and um, on a coaching staff that I got a lot of respect for. So yeah, I mean, this is this is a team that, uh, although they're not you know a Power Five team, their, their their talent level is just as good as most of them. And. The, I think all the offensive linemen were champions. Uh, you mentioned J.K.'s fumble. Were you displeased with how he played? Uh, no, no. But uh, but we all know what what J.K. can do, and and I think you know anytime you you fumble the ball, that's that's a critical error. And so um, if, if it's the number one plan to win, then, then we can't have that happening. Yeah, uh, you guys got under center there pretty quick in the game. Uh, who saw that coming? <laughs> what what did you like about that? Uh, Coach Day. Well, I think it gives us uh, some some versatility and some flexibility in terms of what we're doing. Um, and I know you guys were asking me that all preseason, so I was trying to keep that. Under, yeah, I know, trying to keep it under the vest. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's out there now. I, I think that it gives us um, a lot of things, and I, and I think it gives us some direct runs. I think it gives us some play action pass. I think um, it's just it, it's good to have uh, for for a lot of reasons schematically. And, um, and we've done a good job with that. Justin and Josh have done a pretty good job with that. And, and so, you know, we're going to keep building that package as we go. And two other quickies, Chase Young seemed to have a game. I mean, at least early. I mean, what did you see from him, Just not just from a playing standpoint, from, from a leadership standpoint? What just stood out? Strong, strong presence, strong personality from um, start to finish all week. He was strong on the field. He was strong before the game. And then on the field, you know, he backed it up. So it's it's funny, you know. Some guys can be leaders in certain ways, but when you're strong and you're in front of the team, then you play the way he does. That's that's a sign of a great leader. Yeah, and I know the second and third quarters are kind of weighing on you a little bit the way the offense waned for a while. But what did it mean for the team, for its dauber, for its uh, reputation nationwide and stuff to get off to a start like that with a with a quarterback who transferred in? Uh, what does that do from a confidence standpoint for the group and also, you know, its reputation? Yeah, I mean, everybody was kind of, you know, flying high during that during that time, you know, and then I think that's what we're capable of. We talked about coming out to a fast start, and that was about as fast as I've been around. And so that was good. I mean, that goes to show the explosiveness of, of what we can be, and I think everybody felt that. Now now it's time to keep building on it as we go. Far left, Matt. You talked about, you know, needing to sustain it after uh, that quick start. But what when you looked at it, what did stall you? Was it – your own mistakes? Was it was it taking the foot off the gas maybe mentally? Was it Florida Atlantic? What as you looked at the film? I think it's hard. Installed? Yeah, I think it's hard when you say, well, we scored 28 points in the first half. You'd be like, wow, that, that's pretty good. That's a pretty good day. I'd take that because we're on pace for about 60. Um, but when you when you start that fast, it's like, okay, why don't we score every every series? A little unrealistic. I mean, they have good players and good coaches and they do a good job. And um, you know, the one drive right there, um, you know, we hit the swing to Demario. 
Um, you know, he, he kind of got hit late there. They didn't call it. Okay, the next play, we get the offensive pass interference on Olave. That probably ball would have probably been inside the 10-yard line. They call pass offensive pass interference. We throw the fumble on the backwards pass to Garrett. They get the turnover just like that. And so it was just some of those things. We got a couple holding calls that got us off schedule and um, didn't convert on third down. And so some of those things. And then I think we came out in the third quarter. We kind of, you know, pounded it on them a little bit, got a couple drives going, and then and then kind of finished the game. So uh, a little strange, you know, the way the game played out, but, but a lot to learn from. Is there any improvement area that you look at from – week one to this week that jumps out at you like we have to get this you know fixed just overall execution you know and and, and playing clean and, and no turnovers um for sure and, and then and then the penalties got to get cut down i thought we did a much better job that's been one of our emphasis points with the procedure issues you know there was a couple holding calls we got to get our hands inside on that but for the most part it was pretty clean that way um and so you know those are all the things we got to we got to win the line of scrimmage we got to run the ball we got to be explosive in the pass game and then and then go from there and do a good job in the red zone you talked a bit about Justin already, but looking back, did, was there a favorite play or sequence that got you particularly excited about his potential? Um, believe it or not, it was one of his throwaways on third down. There was nothing there. Um, it was something you may not even notice. It was a third and eight, uh, three-man rush. They got a guy through. There was nothing there. He took the ball and threw it in the stands. Like To me, that was my favorite play of the day because he's understanding what it means. and. You know, it's very uh, hard for somebody who hasn't played a lot of football to understand that that play right there is just as important as the play you make because if you try to throw the ball into traffic and turn the ball over there, it's a disaster. We got a good defense, punt, pin him inside the 10-yard line, and then and then we'll get the ball back soon enough and we'll have another shot. So uh, I thought, and there was there was several of those. There was actually a couple where he didn't have it and he, he got us to like second and six and he scrambled for four yards. Uh, th those are my favorites. Um, you know, the one, the post to Alave, the throw to, to, to Jeremy. Those are what I'm talking about in terms of the big plays will come, but you have to manage the bad plays and it'll make bad situations worse. And Chris Chuganoff was the guy that came off for, for Justin in the late. Was he the backup or, or was that? Uh, yeah, we, didn't, we don't have a, a backup. Uh, you know, uh, Chris, we decided to put Chris in the game, you know, at the end. And uh, he's had a good camp, uh, but those guys will continue to battle, battle it out through practice. Second or middle group? Have you talked to Chip since they played since then? Um, yes, I have. Anything you can share or care to share on what he told um, you? Yeah, you know, we didn't talk too much about the game, really. We talked about, um, you know, my college coach who's going through a tough time right now and a few other things and, uh, you know, wished him luck this week against San Diego State. And we kind of talked about those kind of things and talked about his team, talked about, my, you know, our team and kind of where things are going. And, and, and that was it. Obviously, without saying what it was, do you get into schematics and – what didn't work or did work for them, or do you not talk about that? Eh, not really. You know, typically we would, but there's just there was some things that were more important at the time to talk about, and um, so you know we really didn't get into all that. Hired on December the 10th at Cincinnati. You were hired here on January the 3rd. I don't know if you even came in and looked around, but are, were you guys literally two ships that passed in the night when you talked to him Saturday before the game? Will that be the first time you guys have ever spoken to each other? No, no, no. I've seen I've seen Luke uh, before. I've seen him at different events and different things. Yeah. Thing. Uh, Justin had a big game. Jalen Hurts had a big game. Jacob Eason had a big game. You're a quarterback guy. Three transfer quarterbacks all had big games. What's the challenge coaching a guy like that who's not recruited, not redshirted in your system, comes in, obviously uh, Eason redshirted, but you know the challenge of coaching him and getting him up to speed right away that results in the kind of statistical performance all three guys had? I think it's something that we have to get used to in college football, unfortunately. Um, whether it was Dwayne Haskins for one year, or you know Trevor Lawrence playing last year, or the you know these you know Bo Nix uh, playing you know as a freshman the other day, Sam Howell at North Carolina, and then and then this transfer situation. So guys are getting on the field early. That just is the trend right now in college football with quarterback play, and so we just got to do a good job. You got to uh, understand how you're how you're teaching concepts, and, and make sure that you know you're not exposing them to too much early on, and build their confidence as they go. Uh, and I do think there's an art to it. I think it's it's important not to uh, put too much on them early on, and and teach them you know certain things, and and then don't get rewarded for bad behavior because sometimes you know when you're a really good athlete you can get away with things that are going to hurt you down the road in bigger, tighter games, and so that's all part of the process. How did you arrive on Demario as your main return guy, and how do you think he did? I thought he, I thought he was solid. I mean, he was the special teams player of the week for us on special teams, and I think he had 93 return yards. Um, just missed one to start the game. He got, you know, um, 
his heel clipped, I think, right down, you know, right down to like the 30 yard line. And I thought he was solid. Um, I thought there was a couple that maybe he could have got his hands on on the punts. That uh, it was it was a funky deal though. They were doing the rugby punt, and he you know, kind of punted the ball across his body, and that's a little bit harder to pick up. Um, and so that was we lost some yardage on that. Uh, but he took care of the ball for the most part. That was his number one job going into the game was ball security, and he did that. Um, so it's a start. It's a start, but uh, but we got a new challenge this week. So um, overall, I thought he was solid, but but he can be better too. Um, you, you've said a couple times in different circumstances, you know, failing is one of the best ways for you to get better. Um, and you know this by now at Ohio State. You know, in the big picture, you guys don't fail much. You have to learn from wins or you're not going to learn anything. You've talked about second team defense or what you guys could have done better to keep it going offensively. How much have you been on the guys? How much do you want to push that, you know, and be hard on them even in a good win? Or how much do you want to make sure they know, hey, that's a good win? Yeah, that, that's the balance you find, you know. I mean, if, if it gets too negative, you don't want that either. You know, you got to be positive and, and make sure you reward the guys who graded champions and the guys who played with energy and the guys who played hard because there was a lot of that going on. But at the same time, you know, we, we have a certain standard here. And there's a lot of guys that didn't play quite up to that standard. And we, and we got to build on that. And there's a lot of reasons why. Some of it's inexperience. There's a lot of things that come into play. But that's where, you know, week one to week two is a great opportunity. And this is a great opportunity for us to learn from. And we go back to work today. We got a team meeting at 2.30, practice today, and got to go about getting those things corrected. We did have, you know, our, our practice on Sunday. We do that and, and work through corrections and watch the film and did our, our, our champions meetings. But this is the art of coaching right now. This is where you got to get it on film. Now it's real. And let's make the corrections and move forward. This is a backwards question, and I apologize. Uh, you and Luke both were sort of like a fill-in head coach here at Ohio State. Um, in those three games for you last year, I know all you cared about was doing the best by the team and winning those games. The idea somewhere in the tiny back recesses of your head that didn't matter as much, how did you balance the, I hope, by staying within this structure of Ohio State, I, I hope I can at least give people an impression of that I'd be good at this. Like, it's not, it's not my full, this is the Ryan Day full experience, but I want them to know, like, yeah, I can handle that. How, what was that like for you? Well, I, like I said, it was day to day. Um, but, you know, there, you know, when you have a job to do, you got to fill into that, that role. And um, I think sometimes, you, you know, you're ready for it. Or in, and so many different things come into play in those situations. And we had a tremendous team, uh, tremendous coaches, tremendous administration that, that we all got together and, and we worked through that and some great leaders on that team. And so, um, you know, it was – those three games, they wasn't easy, but we got through it and we worked through it. But, but I think you know when when you're in that role, you know you have to take on that role. You have to wear that hat. And that's a different hat than being a coordinator, a position coach, or anything like that. And and so yeah, you have to kind of uh, you know trigger that that job description. And you know that's what I tried to do the best I could. And we're here now. In the end, when you got done with those three games, you won for the program, and that was the most important thing. Did you also feel like yeah, I showed. I showed people who Ryan Day was. Not that that was the most important thing, but you have personal goals too. Yeah, yeah, but I, I, again, it was just on to the next game for me right at that point. I wasn't really thinking about any of that stuff. And, um, you know, it, if, if you really start focusing on things like that, you can get distracted. And I, I, I honestly just tried to do the best I could to just focus on, on beating, the, you know, I think it was Tulane the next game and just treat building and keeping the offense going and getting Dwayne going. And, um, you know, when you're in this building, there's so much that goes on. You don't really have time to think much. I mean, it's on the game planning and meetings and practice, and it just kind of goes. And then sometimes when you step out of the building, you realize, you know, you're coaching <laughs> and there's, uh, there's the outside world going on. So uh, not a lot of time to do that, and, and kind of we're getting into that rhythm right now as we get into game two. And final couple individuals uh, right next door, Nathan. Hey, you mentioned the, taking the snaps under center gives the offense more versatility. Was that something you would have wanted – for the quarterback this year, whether it was Justin or not, and specifically for him, how does it make him more effective? Uh, I don't know. Uh, Justin felt comfortable under center, and it worked. You know, it's not like we've never tried this before. Um, you know, some things work, some things don't. Some things make sense, and as that's kind of like I was talking about going into the season. What's the journey? What's it going to look like? What's the, we have new pieces to the puzzle, and trying to stay ahead schematically, and, and it worked. So. Um, you know, not that it wouldn't have worked in the past or, or with some other quarterback, but, but it seems to be working right now. We like it. Did you give him and uh, Myers any advice about how to build that rapport, or is, is that 
overrated, that center quarterback. Oh, no, no, it, it's real. It's real. So anytime we had a, um, a fumble exchange during practice, we, we made them both do a lap together. So uh, And that started off early in the spring. And as they go around the, uh, the field together and run together, they have a little conversation about how they get it right. So it gives them a little time to think that through. A little bonding, you know. Yeah. Ryan, of all the things you have going on as a head coach during a game, if a defense throws something at you that you're not expecting, how difficult is it to make in-game adjustments compared to everything else you have going on? Is that kind of at the top of the list of it is. most difficult things? It is. And Kevin and Mike, you know, I thought the communication there was really good. And I, and I think uh, with, with, uh, with Stud, you know, I think you know, we're, we're pretty good at that now. And uh, so we can, pr we can recognize kind of what's going on in game and make pretty good adjustments. And so take pride in that but uh but yeah that's kind of on the forefront and and then you just kind of lean on everybody else to go through but um but but one of the things i do have to do is click over you know when, when the defense is over there to make sure if they need a timeout or something like that i'm in, i'm involved so uh, there is a little bit of a balance there and this week do you kind of have to expect the unexpected from cincinnati's defense or do you kind of feel like they are what they are um, yeah no I, they'll they'll have something that, that we haven't prepared for that you know they'll they'll have a good plan and that they'll have um, you know a few change ups for us I know that'll, that'll be part of it and they've had all, all summer to game plan and so uh, we got to be able to adjust and move on from there Great. coach thank you very much thanks Ryan all right folks that's the end of our transcription uh, we will bring up coach Larry Johnson now for a few minutes to answer questions Uh, yeah, Coach, when we uh, talked to you a while back and you named the three players that we rotating at each tackle spot, uh, Antoine Jackson's name didn't really come up, it seems like. What changed moving into this game and then what allowed him to play so well? You know? Well, he's had, a great, he's had a great fall camp. You know what I mean? You know, when you've got six, seven guys, you know, obviously I mentioned everybody, but Antoine has been quietly come along as a player and he's what we thought he was going to be. He's got a chance to really help us down the stretch. and. He did a really great job for us on Saturday, so you know his confidence is up now, and I think he'll continue to contribute as we go forward. Over here to the right, uh, Austin. Larry, I've asked you a couple of times about Jay Sean, how excited he was to go to three tech, and then all of a sudden he's not at that home anymore. He was getting comfortable. How did you guys decide to move him? I guess it was the injuries, but what was that conversation like, and did he take that news well? Because he seemed really excited to play that, that three-text play. Yeah, we, you know, we thought about it for a little bit, if we were to move him or not. We thought the first thought was not to move him because he played so well at, at the three-tech position. But we felt going into the game the first time, we didn't want a freshman to start at that position because they were a running team. And uh, so we had a conversation with Jay Sean. Jay Sean's a team player. You know, he, did not, he didn't blink an eye. And I say, here's the things we'll have to teach you to do. And I tell you what, he did a great job for us. He really did. Played, are you tempted to just leave him there, or do you still prefer him at three tech? I, I prefer him back at a three technique position because, as you know, my philosophy is our three technique has to be a great pass rusher. Jay Sean brings a different level at that position, so we're going to move him back uh, and continue to go forward. Second row, right, Tony. Talking about Jay Sean, was was that his best game as a Buckeye? I think it was. I think he did some things that uh, that really showed his ability. And he, you saw him run down on a, on a jet screen. You know, that's, that's tough to do. And then you saw his pass rush ability, knocking the ball out, form a sack fumble. So I, I think he's in a really good moment, right? But he's had a great camp, so I'm not surprised. A uh, fifth-year player finally gets it. He understands it. And so we're looking for great things from him. And you said you'll have him back at, at three tech but Does that start this week? Will he be back there this week? Uh, that's our plan is to try to get him back to three technique. And uh, you know, we may move him again, so who knows? I mean, Tyreek and Tyler are good to go. Uh, not quite yet. You know, we haven't practiced this week. You know, but we've got a plan there if that happens. So we'll practice both ways to see what happens, and then we'll make the decision. Get close to Friday. Yep. Right, all right, Bill. Yeah. Um, just in general, was you know, you had the, all those injuries. How do you think your guys just played, especially with the depth? Uh, obviously, dominating start, and then the whole defense tailed off. How do you think your guys played overall? I thought at the beginning of the game we played really fast. You could sense that watching the videotape when you get a chance to come back and watch it. I thought we played really fast. I thought our kids did a great job on handling adversity. And that's the biggest thing. We always talk about the next guy up. You one play away from playing 40 plays if you're a second string guy. And I think that's the mantra in our room. So our kids kind of believe that, our players believe that. And so it wasn't surprising that we were going to adjust and adapt and go forward. But it was really cool to see how well we played the first half. 
Javante got a lot of snaps. What, what has impressed you about him? And how yeah, you, you know, he's the kind of guy that's got to help us down the stretch, so I'm glad he played 30, 35 plays. Zach Harris played about the same amount of plays. So those guys, those are reps that they need to get going forward because then our reps may be 15, 20 plays. We don't know yet, but I'm really happy where they're at right now. Yeah, uh, Larry, Chase Young seemed to play with ferocity and at times good patience, at least from my vantage point. What did you see out of him? And what have you seen out of him as a leader for the first five, six weeks preseason camp and now this season? I think his leadership uh, skills has really been outstanding. I think he's mature as a player, which will happen when you get to this level. Uh, he's third year playing in the system. You learn how to mature, learn how to handle things better. He's done a great job of that. I thought he played really fast on Saturday. Uh, there's always room for improvement with Chase, but I think that it's first game, you know, knock on wood, he stayed healthy and I got a chance to do some really special stuff on the field. Yeah, special, when you look at Cincinnati on tape, what do they do up front that may be a little different than what Florida Atlantic did for you guys as you prepare for that game? What do you see that's different about Cincinnati? Oh, they're power football. I mean, they're really a Big Ten, Big Ten team. You know, really are. They run the football well. They have a really great scheme, great offensive coordinator. Offensive line is, is big. They're young, but they're big. Got some veteran guys there. And the quarterback and the running back is special. So uh, we've got to stop the run first. We have an opportunity to chase the passer. Anything else for Coach? Anybody that I didn't see? Okay, uh, third row left, Dan. Larry, you looked like you got pretty much everybody in there on the defensive line that you could on Saturday. How important is that for you to continue to deploy that deep rotation and get all of those guys reps? Yeah, the key is that we want to be fresh. And so we have opportunity to play guys, eight or nine guys, sometimes 10, down the stretch. You know, it's a long season. You never know what's going to happen. So those guys got those snaps now, can go in the game, not be the first time in the game. They've been in the game, played in a big game. Hopefully that'll help us. So we're going to continue to do that. I like to play fresh. I think that's the key to handling tempo offense or, or playing base defense or playing base offense is to make sure you rotate guys. Deron Cage, Alex Williams, Noah Potter, some of the other guys that got in there. How did you feel about the way those guys performed? I played well. You know, first time, you know, Noah Potter going into a game, Alex when I'm playing. So it's kind of cool to watch those guys play. And and so we'll see how they grow from there. Fourth row left, Jared. I asked Ryan about their run game and about Michael Warren. And when you're playing somebody who's a little different, the yeah. guy that's physical and yeah. will run through you a little bit. Yeah. Just Obviously, you don't play differently, but how do you coach a little differently? Well, we had to coach a little different this week. We got to stay in our gaps, have great gap integrity, and we got to get his hat to the ball. We got to have more than one guy. We got him on the ground. He's a really outstanding back and uh, running really hard. Great power, great legs, great first step, and he can make you miss. And so we got to get some hats to the ball uh, to make sure we have a chance to stop him. But the biggest thing really be gapped out. Make sure we're in gap integrity that we're not out of gaps because go run through one if it's a gap. Larry, I know Jonathan was so excited, senior year, captain, and then to have that injury and miss the first however many first game for sure. How did he take that? How is he responding? What's your role in keeping him involved and ready for when he does get back out there? Jonathan is a resilient guy now. I tell you, you know, we cried a little bit in the beginning just to get through it. Uh, and then he picked himself up and said, hey, I've got a plan. And he's literally living in the training room. I mean, he's there 11 hours, having a chance, 12 hours. 24 hours, we let him either go to class, but he's got to go to class sometimes. Uh, but that's the kind of guy he is, though. He really is. He's working hard. He's been a great leader off the field. He's in our meeting room every day with our players, talking to him, especially the young guys, encouraging them. So he's, he's been a real plus off the field because he's not playing, but he brings a lot to the table. Great. Coach, thank you very yep, much. Yep, you got it. Thanks, Larry. Thanks, Larry. Yes. This will be the last time we get Coach Sudrawa on this year.
Ever. Last time ever. Make them good questions. This is it. You'll never see me again. Hopefully. Hopefully. We'll open up uh, fourth row uh, left. Andy? Yeah, Coach, can you talk about the differences for the offensive line when you go under center versus when you're in shotgun? I'm assuming you're not still in zone blocking. Right? Yeah, it's, it's, there's, some, there's uh, little, little differences, obviously, for the center. The snap's completely different. So that's something we've been working on for a long time with the centers is under, you know, a guy's hand under there because when you take off at certain angles to run certain plays, those are stressful situations. So we've had to work on those a bunch in the off season. And I really thought the first game they handled it really well. It was, it was a concern of mine, to be obvious. Uh, but I think they handled it well, and it's something we need to continue to work on because it's new to us. Front row right, uh, Joey. I think Munford was a guy who was limited some in camp. Um, how did you make, what did you make of his first game? Really well. I think he, he played great. Um, he didn't get a lot of reps. I think the most reps he had in any practice leading up to the game was 22. So you're right. He was limited. We want to make sure we brought him along slowly to make sure his back was back at 100% to be able to handle it. He played 50 plays in the game which was about what I wanted him to play. Uh, he had no ill effects. He moved around well. He bent well. Uh, he, he was really athletic. He's lighter than he's ever been. He was 313. Uh, last year, I don't think he was under three, between 325 and 330 most of the year. So I think that helped him a little bit, took a little stress off his back. But uh, he played extremely well. Do you see that increasing over the following week? Absolutely, yeah, I do. Right, Austin? Stud, when you looked at Jonah Jackson coming in, I think everyone assumed that he would start right away, but he still had to transition to a new program. How did he do that so successfully? I think he is, an, and it's the first thing when we started investigating him right off the bat, and I went and met with him, uh, the maturity level that that kid has is unbelievable. I mean, he is a, he knows what he wants. He's goal-oriented. Goal it was hard for him to leave his friends and guys there, but he wanted a chance to be successful. This game means so much to him, and playing it, he wanted to have a chance to win everything. And I noticed that attitude about him, and that's what makes him a great player. His attention to detail, his seriousness. You know, I think Coach said it one day during two days. Uh, we had the evening off, and everybody was sitting there on their phones, taking naps and sleeping, and Jonah's in there on his iPad watching film. It's a prime example right there. That says it all. It's important to him. And he came out, and I don't know if you watched it. I think he had nine knockdowns or... I mean, he was extremely physical. He finished. And then you watch that film, all the younger guys are like, oh, maybe that's how you're supposed to do this. You know, so that, that effect that he had on that room was unbelievable just in one game. I was trying to remember if he said it was nine knockdowns. That seems like a pretty good debut. What kind of love, attention do you get in the offensive line room when that's the kind of number you put up? That's what we celebrate together. You know, we close the doors and we celebrate those kind of things together um, because that's the extra effort. That's the one thing, I understand the culture of the program, what we ask them to do, go hard. Go hard, period. If, if you make a mistake or you don't understand something, blame me. That's my fault. But I'm not going to tell you to go hard. And that's the one thing that that kid does, and he'll set the tone for the rest of the group and the rest of our team as guys watch his film and watch what he puts on film because he goes to the end now. He goes just past the echo of the whistle. That's what we talk about, just past it, you know, because that's what I want. And if something happens sometime, that's good. Okay, that's on me. That's on us. But I want you to play hard, go through, finish your block to the very end, and that's what he did. And it'll make us all better for it. Yeah, uh, Stud, there were a couple of plays where after, after the play, you saw these big offensive linemen jumping up and down like they were little kids and stuff. Is that what you wanted out of that group? I mean, how, how much of a dream start, I guess, was it? And uh, I got to follow up. Awesome. Uh, that's exactly what I want, to be honest with you. There's, here's young guys that don't have a lot of game experience. And if you watch the first touchdown, we run the sweep with the zone. Justin pulls it and goes. They're running behind the play, sprinting. Pump fist. That's what I want. That's, the, that's exactly what I want. Go hard. Be enthusiastic. Love what you're doing. Love who you're doing it with. And that's exactly what I won't accept anything else. That's the, the, one of the benefits of coaching a youthful group like they are. That enthusiasm, I want them to have that and keep that. The second, third quarters, what kind of like fell off there from your vantage point? I mean, well, I think they started doing some different things. Um, uh, they, a little couple movement things hurt us. They started blitzing more. All right, we had to finish some blocks and finish some things. And it's like anything else. Once we get a first down, we're really confident. If we don't get the first series, we don't go out and get a first down. We start to get sluggish and slow down. And that's what happened. 
a couple incomplete passes, a run for no gain. Now all of a sudden you're in third and long and, and you know, converting those things. So I think it was just attention to detail. And maybe when it was 28 nothing, they took a little bit of a lull. You know, I don't like to see that, but I think that's a little bit what happened, part of it too. But then again, they fought back through it and started grinding and got the thing back going again, which again was good to see. Uh, third row left, Dan. Some of your offensive linemen mentioned after the game about how, you know, FAU's defensive line, they changed their techniques and that might have caused them some problems. What are the things that you do as a coach during the game to work with those guys and help them adjust to that? Yeah, it's a great question. It, it, what they were doing is obviously they weren't as big as we were. So initially they came in, they were playing their technique and doing things, and we were knocking them off the ball a little bit. Then they started to jump around, move, it's lateral. So what we have to do at that point when that happens is change our technique, and that's what I do on the sidelines. Now, you can't come off and try to kill a guy that's going to move lateral side to side and jump around the block. We have to be more sound with our footwork. We have to be a little bit less aggressive, all right, in getting on that guy when he moves instead of trying, like our young guys were, trying to kill him and, and finish the block really quickly. So we have to make our adjustments in-game, and that's what we did kind of in the second half. Put in a counter scheme, put in a gap scheme, put in a couple of different things that would allow us to handle that movement a little bit better. Are there things you can do during the week of practice that make it so if that happens in the next game, you might be able to adjust a little bit more? Quickly? Uh, we're going to work on it right now because I can tell you right now it will happen in this game. So we're going to work on it today in about two hours. And final set of questions. Over to the left, Doug. Uh, Greg, in the end, how close was the, the Brandon Bowen Petit Frere battle at right tackle? And Re really close. Really close. But, but in the end, Brandon's maturity and, again, he's so smart. I mean, he, 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 him being out there making the calls and protections and things and just how he played the last two scrimmages just edged Nick out. You know, it was really, really a close battle. And again, Nick's still going to play, just like Alby's still going to play on the other side. Because I, 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 those four kids can play a lot of football and keep us fresh throughout the season without having guys absorb too many snaps. The starters, I think, absorbed 75 Saturday, and then Nick got 25, Alby got 25. Well, they still got their work, and then the young three guys inside got about 12. It's good. They all got to play. But that'll keep us fresh throughout the season and allow us to stay healthy. And is that when you have a, a talented young guy like Nick um, and he's trying to win a job and he doesn't do it, what do you have to do as a coach to make sure he stays connected, well, stays upbeat? You're exactly right. You have to keep his confidence level up. Because, you know, obviously both those kids were battling their heart out for that job. And when one loses the job, disappointment sets in. And you just had, I just had to sit down with Nick and tell him, hey, listen, it's coming. Don't press. It's coming. You're doing fantastic. It's not anything that you did wrong. You're still developing. You're still coming. Don't worry about that. Keep working on your game and keep developing because you never know what's going to happen. And final questions over here to the right side. It was, also, it was also Josh's first start. How did he play? Really well. I tell you, I, I all the things that we put on our center here, making the calls and doing all those things, and then, and then we're in the shotgun, then we're under center, and then we're doing – he handled it magnificent. I was worried about it. I, I thought it might be a little too much on him early, but he, he really handled it well. He played physical as well. He had four or five tremendous blocks down the field. That touchdown run, he hits a linebacker and he's sailing through the air as Justin goes by. And so he, he was able to – overcome his nerves, because I know he was nervous before the game. It was his first start. But he was over, o, able to overcome his nerves and really play physical and still handle all the things mentally. I think there were only two misidentifications that he had the entire game, which was, which was excellent. I thought there would be some more, you know, being his first game and how nervous he was, and there weren't. I know you had confidence in your guys, and some of them are experienced, mm -hmm. but they hadn't played together. Oh, sure. Uh, how much trepidation <laughs> was there in your mind about how they would gel and, and how far along – how much more do they have to do to really become that cohesive line? We have a long way to go. Uh, I was worried about it. So to, just to put it point blank, I love those guys. All right, I, I'm confident in them. Like you saw, the youthful exuberance I love. They're, they're running down the field. They're knocking people down. They're getting extra blocks. All those things that you want in the coach. But you also want them to be on point with technique, on point with identification. I don't want any MAs. And we had a few of those that I didn't like that we have to clean up. So. I think they can be a tremendous offensive line. That's why I kept them in there probably a little longer than I would have because of what you just said. I want them to play together. They have Jonah has to get used to playing with Thayer. You know, Bowen has to use get Wyatt next to him. Those things all, all those relationships with communication during a game take time to develop. That's why they were in there and doing that. And I was pretty happy with what they did. But we got a long way to go. We're nowhere near where we need to be. Coach, thank you very much. Right, thanks. Thanks, Dad. See you next year. <laughs>
How you doing? Hello, oh, Jenna. How are you doing? I'm wonderful. And it sounds like they want you guys doing a little of everything. Lining up under center, lining up in shotgun, having uh, Justin use his athleticism, having him stay in the pocket, passing, running. Do you feel like you know what this team does well offensively right now since you're being asked to do a little of it all? Um, yeah, I think we all know what we do well right now. And we just got to um, fix the mistakes we made on Saturday and go from there. What are the things that you feel like you could, this offense would hang its hat on in crunch time right now? Um, I feel like there's a lot that, that we have to uh, fix, but um, I'm not really too sure specifically like what exactly we can hang our hat on because we do a lot of things really well. It's just a matter of being able to execute it every time. So we'll have to see. Uh, front row right over here, Austin from Letterman Road. Jonah, you've played in a lot of Big Ten games, obviously. But to, for that, to play the first one, for Ohio State in the shoe, did you have any nerves or any feel different than in the other games for you? Um, yeah, it definitely felt different. I was playing uh, as a home team in the shoe. It was pretty electric, you know, when you score a touchdown. And so um, that was definitely something different. You've heard a couple times about the nine knockdowns for that opener. How does that stack up with some of your other uh, better performances in your career, I guess? I think that might take the cake for uh, <laughs> most knockdowns, but, you know, I, I still made some mistakes here and there. And there's things i got to fix for sure in that. Some things had to be going right, though, to get to that total. What I mean, what's made the difference maybe for you? Um, I just, you know, there's one thing I like to hang my hat on, and that's being nasty and finishing. So you know, that's something I wanted to make sure I did in the game. And right next door, Tim, also from Letterman Rome. Yeah, it's specifically about what you were feeling on Saturday. When you're running down behind uh, Justin as he's scoring that first touchdown, you got your fist in the air, et cetera. <laughs> are, are you thinking – I can't believe I'm here. I mean, what 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 are the thoughts going on there? I was just thinking about giving him a big hug. I was very excited, you know. The first drive we scored, and, and he took it to the house for, what, 51 yards? So, I mean, there's nothing like that, especially running right behind him with your hand, hands in the air for a touchdown. But to, but to be a major <clears throat> component of that first touchdown, you know, as you were and stuff, did that kind of put a cap on your decision? I mean, you know what I mean, the, the decision you made to come here in the first place? Oh, yeah, for sure, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. In, in what respect? I mean, is, is I don't know how long. How long did you sleep on that decision? Uh, and then when, did, when? What told you it was the right thing to do finally? Um, I mean, when I took my visits and like when I got my my I guess my offers, I, I realized that there was two schools. I kind of told people this earlier. That was Oklahoma and Ohio State. And once I kind of got here and realized everything that goes on in this uh, great program, I was like, this is it. This is home. Jonah, 
Coach Studd and some of the other offensive linemen talked about how FAU's defensive line changed their techniques, and you guys had to adjust to that over the course of a game. Just what are the things that you have to do as an offensive lineman when you see that all of a sudden the defense is starting to look a little bit different? You just gotta, you know, you just gotta be able to communicate with the line and, and with uh, Coach Studd when you come off to the sideline to make the adjustments necessary because. You know, not everybody's going to play Ohio State straight up. They're going to send the kitchen sink at you, so you just got to be ready for it all. What are the things you guys are doing in practice this week to make sure that you're ready if you see something different than you expect again on Saturday? I'm just scheming up everything that, I guess, Cincinnati would have in, in, in store for us, looking at all their packages from this year, last year, and just getting ready for that. How do you feel like you guys were able to adjust in the second half on Saturday? Um, I feel like we were able to adjust uh, pretty well. I mean, we just came to the sideline told Coach Stell what was going on, we communicated it well, and then we picked it up from there. Uh, second row right, Tony from the Ozone. Jonas, so you guys put up 45 points. The offensive line all grades out as champions. You guys rushed for 237 yards, and there's a sense that maybe it wasn't good enough. So um, I'm wondering, like, how, how is uh, the new normal for you? I mean, well, every time you, you get a win, that's, that's always great, you know, how hard it is to win a game in college football. But there's always definitely room for improvement. And, you know, next time we, we shoot to aim for 300 yards rushing, maybe more, and just keep going from there and building off the things we do good. When you leave the game, are you thinking about the the plays that maybe didn't get made, or are you thinking about the stuff that went well for you? Personally? Well, you, th you think about both of them. I mean, you, t you take pride in what you did well, but then the, the mistakes that were made, you definitely want to make sure they're fixed for the next game. So, I mean, you can be successful as a team. Front row left, uh, uh, Nathan from Cleveland.com. Uh, yeah, for, for yourself, you know, people talk a lot about offensive line cohesion, how important it is for you guys to be a, the starting group to be really connected. What did you do to kind of try to maybe speed up that process for yourself coming in as a, a transfer? Um, I mean, well, when I came in, the guys welcomed me with open arms. It wasn't like I had to do much to – like I had to, you know, obviously earn my respect and everything, but the guys definitely made me feel as comfortable as possible and welcomed me greatly with open arms. So, yeah. That's something I credit them with, for sure. What impressed you the most about um, Josh Myers' performance? Um, how mature he is, man, you know, especially since that, that was his first start. You know, guys like that, you know, they're usually jittery. You've seen on the first touchdown run, he's chucking a dude five yards down the field, so he, he's a grown man down there, for sure. Last couple sets of questions here. Front row right, uh, Joey from the Columbus Dispatch. What if Thayer Mumper was the guy who didn't get a ton of reps with you guys in camp? Um, how did you kind of build chemistry with someone like him where maybe you don't have a ton of camp reps? Well, I mean, well, we're in the offensive line room. We have a lot of time watching film together and lifting and stuff like that. So we definitely built a relationship there outside of the football field. And then on the football field, I mean, he was he may not have been then, there with every rep, but we were getting mental reps together when the twos were in and then just talking and uh, game planning and what we need to do. What was it like finally playing a lot with there? Um, it was good. It was, a, it was good. He's, he's strong. He's an experienced player, and he knows what he's doing. Jonah, could you uh, kind of describe the, the difference between uh, the confidence level and playing for the Buckeyes here versus what you had to experience playing for Rutgers when you come in here and as a big-time underdog? I mean, how tough is that situation? Um, I mean, well, well, both times, you I mean, you have your, your confidence in both teams. I mean, not every team's going to come into a situation and be like, well, this is it. We're here at Ohio State. But, I mean, being here, being at Ohio State now, you realize the expectation you have to withhold and um, – it's definitely something that's different, for sure. And how just emotionally tough was it to, to leave your friends, know, leave everything you knew about your college experience? And, and was it just the idea that I can play for a championship? I, can, I mean, what was it in the end that made you decide, okay, I need to leave the place that I call home? I mean, like, as you grow up, I mean, you, you leave your home, you leave your parents, you move out, and that's something, like, that I did as a part of growing up was being able to leave my school. It definitely was hard, but... Um, the decision just came down to just seeing what else was out there for me, for sure. Great. Jonah, thank you very much. Of course. Folks, we're going to bring up Devon Hamilton now. <clears throat> we'll open it up for questions for Devon Hamilton. <clears throat> Front row right. How did you guys, as a unit, um, discuss how you were going to play without, a, I think, three defensive ends, especially uh, uh, Jonathan? Um, was there a talk among you guys that, okay, we, we got to pick it up? Or what was that discussion like if you had one? I wouldn't say pick it up. I mean, we 
always pray, like preach, uh, like competitive excellence. So whoever is up is up. You know, I mean, if somebody goes down, of course we want them on the field and whatnot. But you got to be ready, even if you're a backup, third string. You got to be ready. I mean, even working real hard during camp, and I feel like that is working out for us so far. I know you're you're close with Jonathan, yeah. right? How have you kind of bucked up his spirits, or has that needed to be done? <laughs> um, if you know Jonathan, you. He's a pretty spirited guy. I mean, there's nothing really going to bring him down. Um, but, no, he's been around us a lot. I feel like that's helped him a lot. I mean, he's on the field, obviously. He's on the sideline, pepping, talking to everybody, making sure everybody's doing their job. So that's pretty – it's keeping him right there, you know, with us. Uh, right next door, Tim from Letterman Row. Yeah, Devon, uh, everybody keeps talking about uh, Cincinnati and the uh, <clears throat> chip is going to have on his shoulder coming in here, the underdog, et cetera. Like, you guys have nothing to play for. What What is y'all's incentive in this game, going against an in-state opponent, a coach you guys know, et cetera? What, what is the firing up point? Uh, it's not really a firing up point. It's just we have to win. And that's what any team that comes in here or where we go. I mean, for Ohio State, everybody's going to have a chip on their shoulder when they play us, and we're prepared for it. Was it where was there, was there a moment in Saturday's game when things, um, this past Saturday, when things were going – like maybe you envisioned, or what, what, what did you just see out of the defense from your perspective that told you things are different compared to a year ago? Uh, I feel like we're more connected almost in a way. I mean, maybe last year you might have seen a lot of like individual groups doing well, but I feel like as a team, we're finally, as a defense, we're all together, playing together. Uh, front row right, Austin? There's been you know, some talk that maybe that was the best Jay Sean has ever played in his career. It's been a long time coming for him. For you guys that have been watching him work and develop, how good did it feel to see your teammate kind of step up and deliver the way he did? Uh, I was very proud of him. You know, I mean, he has had a long journey here with injuries and whatnot. And it's, I mean, it's hard for anybody who's just now, like, getting out there, you know, because of injuries. So, I mean, I'm really proud of him seeing his growth and everything else. Was there anything, it didn't seem like that was the way you guys planned to line up. You know, you had the three injuries there at end, scrambled with Jay Sean. I mean, how much more room is there to grow because you guys still have a chance to get healthy and get everybody back maybe in the spots they want to be in? Uh, we, I mean, you have a lot of room to grow. I mean, like I said, if he, I mean, we're always ready for adjustments, obviously. I mean, we're willing to do anything that it takes in order to win. Far left, Lori from WTBN. Javon, coming down to this game, what is your sense of how happy the coaches were with the way you guys performed? Uh, I feel like our coaches are really happy about the way we perform, but at the same time, we always have improvements. I mean, with our uh, second group, I mean, we'd rather not have them score in our game, but I mean, that's a part of the improvement process. I mean, even though it is our second group, it's also a reflection of the whole defense itself. So. Ryan said that he likes to give you guys a sense of where you are. Mm -hmm. I know you haven't had your 2.30 meeting yet, but what does that entail when he, when he gives those kind of talks? What does he mean when he tries to impart where you are? Uh, he just basically gives us our our things that we did very well and things that we need to continue and then uh, our stuff that we need to improve on. Kind of not really a negative standpoint, but just like we need to really buckle down and get, get to what we need to get to. Uh, front row, second row left, Joe Landis from uh, The Athletic. What's it do for you guys as a, as a defensive line when uh, your linebackers seem to be flown to the ball the way they were? They, they were sticking a couple guys too. Like, I don't know, do you sense any hesitancy in the offense when you have a, a linebacker group playing behind you guys like that? Uh, I definitely sense it a lot. I mean, we're all just playing a gap defense for the most part, but uh, it really helps out with us. I mean, we don't have to fight as much to get to a tackle per se, but when a linebacker's coming in, you're Running backs are hesitating, running into a hole that might be open, possibly running to us. So it kind of works out, kind of plays hand in hand. And do you have a, do you have a preference, nose or three technique? Uh, whatever it takes to win. <laughs> what, what do you do? Is there anything you I know, like, snap to snap, your your job descriptions are different. But do you, technique-wise, have to play any differently when you're one spot or the other? Uh, I guess it's just a slight, a little bit more running than nose, obviously. But, I mean, overall, we play play the same. Same way. Great. Anything else? Uh, third row left, Dan. Yeah, you guys got a lot of guys in there, guys like Antoine Jackson, Deron Cage had an opportunity to play a little more on Saturday and they have in the past. Just what did you see out of some of those less experienced guys in the rotation on Saturday?
Uh, I've seen a lot of good stuff we've seen during camp. You know, a lot of – well, a few pressures here and there, a, lot, a few tackles. I mean, I was – Proud of them for going in and being able to play at the level we needed to play at. How important do you think it is for you guys to be able to adjust and to have a deep rotation, no matter who might be unavailable to play for a game? Um, I think it does a lot for a season. I mean, a season is very long. I mean, we need a lot of depth in order to be play at the highest level we need to play at. So, or to get to the goals we want to get to. So, that kind of helps out a lot having depth. On Jay Sean, just from someone who watches him work every day, what is it about him that allows him to move between three technique to end back in the, I mean, is it just a physical thing? Is there something about his mentality? Why is he that versatile? Uh, I think it's more like an attitude. I mean, he understands that we need to do whatever we need to do in order to win. And I mean, he's willing to give up a spot or move over or whatever it may be in order for us to adjust and win the game. So. Was Luke your primary recruiter? Oh, yes. So obviously there's some relationship that <laughs> developed there. Yeah. What, what makes him good? Why is he unique? And why does that maybe up your interest in what's coming Saturday? Uh, he's just a great leader overall. I mean, when he was here, he, I mean, he led the defense. Obviously, he was the defensive coordinator and whatnot. And he was always there, always prepared, always sound almost. So. We got a lot to look forward to on Saturday. Okay, and we're going to go with one more front row left. Uh, uh, Doug? I just want to follow up on that. Did, did you feel like, uh, did Luke fight for you at all to get you in the class? Or how, how important do you think he was in, in you winding up here? Oh, I mean, he was our primary recruiter outside of Coach Johnson when he came all the way to my house to come recruit me. So I feel like he, I mean, he had a big role in that. I mean. When he was here, it seemed like Luke sometimes would be a guy who would find some good players in Ohio who maybe weren't, you know, yeah. top 100 kids necessarily, but were good players that would be good fits here. And it seemed mm -hmm. like, I don't know if you felt like you were one of those guys that's like, hey, you know. I mean, yeah. I mean, I feel like it helps out a lot having somebody who's actually from Ohio recruit Ohio kids who's more personable in that, that way. So. Great. Devon, thank you very much. Mm -hmm.
arcade where you could call the Duluth Arena Auditorium. Yeah. But now it's called the Devil Miss Duluth Arena. Yeah. I think you should say the Devil Miss Duluth Arena. I don't know. It is a different area. It's a nice Yeah. from the dispatch. Well, is this game special for you at all, being a Cincinnati guy? Oh, certainly. Um, we actually played Nippert in Nippert. Uh, I think it was my either junior or senior year to open the season. So uh, especially, I mean, all my friends, everybody's calling me, asking me for tickets this week. Not going to be able to give them that many. But uh, no, yeah, certainly being from Cincinnati, everyone's going to be watching uh, even more than uh, other weeks. So yeah, it's going to be fun. Did they offer you? Did you seriously consider them? Uh, I actually don't believe they did offer me. So, um, yeah, just never happened. So. Drew see me offline after this press conference. I've got some information for how your friends can get tickets for this game. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not through me. I, I only get four. No, no, so. no, no, no. I, I got. We got. <laughs> Second or right, Tony from the Ozone. Drew, what's uh, what's the most important stat for you as a punter? The net, we we play a big role. Uh, put a lot of emphasis on the net. Um, a lot of guys look at the average, uh, but we want zero return yards. We gave up a couple last game, so kind of upset about that. But uh, yeah, definitely the net. We want zero return yards. How um, do you are you a, do you watch the stats of the rest of the punters in the Big Ten, big in the nation? Do you pay attention to what other people are doing? Uh, not really early on. I'll see kind of start hearing about it. Later in the season, um, everybody's kind of up and down. Near the end of the season, you start seeing who's really coming out on top. Um, I try to not look at it too much, just kind of focus on myself. So, Front row right here, uh, Austin from Letterman Row. Drew, you, we know how important Terry McLaurin was uh, in that gunner role last year. The, is that a big loss for you, how, and how have those new guys filled in there? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I love Terry. He was probably the best in the business, but... Um, Seems like every year we have another guy step up and fill that role. I think Chris Olave, he's going to be a really good one there. Isaiah Pryor, he was special teams player of the week, two tackles on punt. Um, yeah, I mean, there's shoes there to be filled, but uh, our guys are doing really well at it. So, this might sound weird or stupid, I don't know, but do you have to develop chemistry with Gunners the same way a quarterback would with receivers? Oh, certainly. Yeah, especially like later in the game if you need like a big punt. Just being able to reach to them on the sideline as you're running out there, like, hey, I really need you here. You know, I don't, I don't care if you're tired, man. We just got, we got to get this one. So, um, definitely building that in the off season, uh, going through workouts together. You know, kind of every now and then poking out, like, hey, I need you this year. So, uh, front row left, Doug from uh, Cleveland.com. Uh, uh, along the lines of the of the Gunners, like, how curious are you, sort of, each year of like, well, who who are the Gunners going to be? Like, are you tracking that you're talking about net I mean like you know yeah. that's a big deal that's a big part of them and they bailed me out last game for sure my hang time wasn't where I wanted it at all um they I mean they were running down there really really good but uh yeah I mean you, you, I mean a couple of them were there last year like Cam Brown Chris Olava even came in a couple uh Jeff Okuda he made a lot of big plays as a gunner last year so um yeah you see him you see him you, you kind of know who's going to be your gunners um ones who have done it and ones who you think can be really good at it. So, What do you think of the idea? You know, Terry's a third-round pick in the NFL. Okuda might be a first-round pick someday. Yeah. Devin Smith was a gunner here. He was a second-round. Denzel like, Ward. Denzel yeah. Ward. Like, they put some talented dudes 
at Gunner here. What does a punter think of that? That means a lot. I mean, they, we say it all the time. We put our best athletes on special teams. So uh, we put up emphasis on that premium place on coverage. And we're going to have our best athletes running down the field and causing that fair catch. So, I mean, it just gives you a lot of confidence when you see those guys on the outside. Knowing if you hit a low hang time punt, they're still going to be right in their face. So it takes a lot of pressure off me. Drew, growing up, how many of your friends were uh, Ohio State fans? How many of them were fans of UC? I mean, percentage-wise, et cetera? I remember when I started to get recruited by Ohio State, um, a lot of them were pushing for Ohio State. A lot of Buckeye fans uh, at the high school I went. Uh, but I'm sure there's just as many Cincinnati fans. I guess I never really talked to Cincinnati, so I w wasn't really in one of my top three when I started narrowing it down, so I wasn't sure. Um, but just being in that area, I'm sure there was a lot of them. So. Yeah, what, what kind of esteem is Cincinnati football held in down there? I mean, from growing, you know what I mean, from your vantage point? I remember when I was getting recruited, um, I didn't hear too much about them. But now that I'm kind of in the whole college football scene and, you know, hearing about a lot of my buddies who are playing on their team now and guys who have come here went to uh, Cincinnati, are playing there now too, just uh, following them all on social media. I mean, they're, they're a good team. And, uh, I mean, they're going to bring it. So. How much do you think of you know, those guys that you know who, who went there to play, et cetera, and, and, and how much does this game, you think, mean to them from your, you know, because you're a player, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's Battle of Ohio, really. Um, I mean, they're going to come up here and try to take us out for sure. And, uh, I mean, look at Coach Fickle. I mean, he was here. Um, so there's definitely a little bit of a little rivalry here. Um, so I'm excited to see kind of – what that looks like on Saturday. And one of the things, you, 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 you kind of remind me of a golfer because you have to have like a wedge, a, a three wood, a, a driver. Did, on the kick down to the four on Saturday, was that, did you finally get to use your driver? I mean, you know what I mean? What, what does it feel like to kind of let one unleash one, I guess? Yeah. Um, yeah, I really just tried to boot that one. Uh, I finally saw some field in front of myself, so I just really let it rip, didn't try to take any off of it. And uh, it was more of a driver, and the guy did have to b back up a little bit. Probably I wanted a higher, lower uh, distance, but uh, ended up driving that one. And um, I think Chris Olave was like a couple yards away from getting that ball around the four. Um, so, yeah, definitely definitely tried to drive that one a little more since I saw some field, got a little excited. What gives you the most satisfaction? Uh, finally getting to pull the driver out? Or, I mean, you know what I mean? Or just what, where do you get your most satisfaction as a punter? I think just pinning him inside the 10. That's that's what I really strive for. Um, as, as close as I can get them to the goal line, I know our defense is going to stop them, and we'll get the ball back around midfield. And that's just that's just the plan plan to win right there. Just ha just playing downhill all the time. So anytime I can get them pinned back and on their heels, that's that's when I love it. So far left, Lori from WTVN. I see it happened, Jess, but what sort of screening process do the people who get tickets for you have to go through? Because as Tim alluded to. There's a lot of Cincinnati fans in the Cincinnati area, and you probably don't want to bring people in here who are only rooting for OSU when you punt, right? Uh, I don't know if the screen process, it's pretty extensive, I know. They, they call them and check their backgrounds and everything, but I'm sure my buddies from high school just want some tickets, just want to see me play, so I don't think there's any shadiness going on there. So you're going to make sure that they're not like wearing Bearcats gear when they come here? Oh, yeah, yeah. At least red and, red and black, scarlet and gray. Close enough. Drew, I know there was some conversations about whether Matt Barnes would coach from a field or coach from a box, and he ended up coaching from a box yeah. on Saturday. Just from your perspective, what's that communication like between him and your other coaches when he's up there and you're on the field? Yeah, I, I, Coach Fleming's on the field. Uh, we kind of deal a lot directly with him during the game. Uh, he's right there in our ear all the time right after the punt and everything, kind of giving us feedback. Um, so we didn't really have to talk to him as much because they're communicating. And then so we kind of communicate through Coach Filmy to him. So uh, he's a great asset right there on the field. So we don't have to go on the telephone and call him whatnot. So. Thank you. Yep. Great. Drew, thank you very much. Yep. Thanks, Drew.
that, but potentially for my little newspaper that I worked at, they had like a circulation of like 6,000. London Daily would Times? Not, would not credential Buck Country. No, I'm kind of. Many, many, many more people were reading it. Even in 2004. Or 2006. Yeah, just, we didn't know what we were dealing with back then. Right. Clearly. It was, a, it was a new era. It was. Thank you, Nicole. Source you use there, Jerry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One guy vote on it? One, one guy to ask. No, I, I asked a number of guys. We got closest to retirement when he thinks about the new thing that we want to do. No, let's not do that. Can confirm. When, when they banned Where the TV going? briefly, and we asked Russ, what do you think about it? About the election? <laughs> Yeah, that, yeah, and sure, he, then people won. erroneously blamed him. You yeah. always blame Jerry. Yeah. <laughs> Just like Cardale, Jerry, is that true? Cardale did interviews? <laughs> Clay, thanks, buddy, remember that? Clay, like, I didn't get it. And I wasn't there, but I heard Cardale did an interview, and Coach, would you comment? What, Jerry? Cardale did an interview? Yeah. 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 Student appreciation day. Yeah, it was after you guys went rogue.
Uh, we'll open up the floor for uh, Justin Fields. We'll open him up, up front row uh, left. Nathan from Cleveland.com. Justin, just when you rewatched the game, what was the thing that jumped out at you the most that you need to work on going into next week? Um, just fi fixing the the little things, uh, just like uh, protection uh, protection wise, and just just going through um, all the reads and just just. I guess just carrying out the fakes and just, just doing all, all the little things right. So, so all that stuff. Um, and Coach Day was saying that uh, during preseason when you and uh, Josh would have a fumbled snap, mm -hmm. you had to take a lap together. Yeah. Just What were those conversations like? Uh, we would just try to uh, kind of tell each other what, what we felt and um, kind of just, just, just to try to get on the same page with each other and just, uh, just, just kind of get that straightened out really. So. Literally, those conversations were just about what went wrong on the snap. Yeah, that like makes it would be a certain play. It would be a certain play where he would have to go reach a guy to the left or to the right, and he would move faster. So, um, just just kind of adjusting to his his speed and kind of the way he moves just kind of helped the snaps a lot. Right next door, Dave from Two Forty Seven Sports. Justin, as a quarterback, how do you uh, get ready to get hit in a football game without getting hit in practice? That would seem to be like a hard thing to do. That, that when you're never getting hit in practice, then all of a sudden you yeah. get it. Get used to it in a game. I think it's very hard because, like, on Sunday, I was I was definitely feeling it. So, um, uh, but I think as the season goes on, uh, my my body will adjust to it. So, I'll be good. And um, after the first quarter, would you say the offense went a little vanilla? Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I that's mean, natural for taking a bit. Yeah, I I just think the offense as a whole has to uh, keep up the tempo, and uh, the whole game we have to act like the score is uh, zero to zero. So, um, I, I just think we got up on them early, and then we kind of uh, took the tone down a little bit. So. Uh, uh, throughout these next few games, we have to just just keep just keep uh, going at them. Uh, front row right, uh, Joey from uh, the Columbus Dispatch. What do you think was the most important thing you learned from your first start? Um, as I said, just just to uh, keep it going and just I have, it's it's my job uh, to keep the the O line and the the whole offense as a whole just to I guess keep the tempo up and just just keep uh, trying to score because I, I felt like we kind of um, just didn't play as high of as high of a level as we did just just to start off the game, so we just have to keep keep it going. Uh, front row right, Austin from Letterman Row. Justin, what do you think the best thing you did was on Saturday? Um, I think I did a lot of good things, uh, controlling the offense, um, and just just leading the guys. But as I said, there's always room to improve, so I'm just gonna keep keep on doing that, improving. What was the first thing that came to your mind that you wanted to improve when you left? When I left Saturday, Saturday night. Um, it wasn't really much improving. It's just uh, just kind of get more consistent, I guess, and um, just kind of getting in a routine and just watching film. And it was it, my mind was really on uh, this week, uh, Cincinnati. So I, I really wasn't worried about uh, FAU after that game. Second row left, Stephen from Cleveland.com. Justin, when you're scrambling, when you're getting pressured. Is your first thought, let me just get down the field and make a play with my legs, or is it? Are you still kind of looking downfield and just trying to get rid of the ball as quickly as possible? Um, I'm still looking downfield, but I think uh, the receivers and I have to get on the same page in, in terms of scrambling and uh, what they're doing when I'm scrambling. So I think that'll uh, be one of the things we kind of focus on and um, just improve on as the season goes on. And on any read option play that you guys ran after you looked at the film, like I guess, what would you say your evaluation of how you read it on Saturday was? Well. I think um, I think I did pretty good on in terms of the read option plays and just uh, reading a certain defender. But um, I'm not trying to take a lot of hits, especially early in the season. So because uh, it's a long season, so I'm just trying to be able to preserve my body uh, as long as possible. Uh, third row right, uh, Dylan from Delaware County Daily Times. What have you seen on film from Cincinnati? How much film have you watched on Cincinnati yet? And what have you seen that stands out? Um, I came in yesterday and watched some film with uh, Coach Yersage, and I just stayed in his office when. The whole offensive staff was in the the meeting room, so I've I've watched a good bit on them already. Does anything stand out to you in particular? Um, not not really. They're they're a good team on defense, and um, their defensive coordinator he came from here, so we know that. And uh, I think we're just gonna prepare well this week. Just get ready for those guys. Anything else? Ooh, okay. Front <laughs> uh, row left. Our second row left. Bill from the Athletic. Nice turn. Justin, uh, what's it like when uh, you have a game where you have five total touchdowns and your head coach says his favorite play of yours is one where you threw the ball into the stands? Yeah, I mean, he always tells me that in practice because uh, he really emphasizes just playing smart and uh, taking care of the ball. So 
Um, so I'll have a crazy touchdown in practice, and then he'll tell me uh, after practice is done, my favorite play is when you threw the ball away. So that's not the first to hear that from him. So he just likes it when I just play smart and uh, just make smart decisions. How much does that maybe, I don't know, run counter to your instinct? You're, you're an athletic guy. You can get on the edge and make plays, but you know sometimes it's just not there, and that's the best decision to throw it away. Yeah, you just have to uh, know the situation, really, and know what's, what's best for the team. So uh, I think he's really just ingrained that in my brain, just taking care of the ball and just making the smartest decisions because um, it's, it's nothing wrong sometimes, third and third and long, just, just throwing the ball away and just putting, putting the ball away. So there's, there's nothing wrong with that. You talked uh, in the summer about working on the speed of your drops and, and pocket presence and that mm -hmm. stuff. I know you stood in there and took some shots the other day. Mm -hmm. um, just where, where do you think you are in, in developing that kind of pocket presence? Did you see any moments from Saturday where maybe if you stayed in a half second longer, something might have broke open for you? Um, as far as Saturday, I, I think I did a pretty good job in terms of staying in the pocket. Of course, there's, there's always some plays where you think you could have done that. But I mean, you can't really think about that in the game. You kind of just have to just just play play the game when it when it's there and just focus on that during uh, the week where we, where we practice and stuff like that. So during the game, I'm not really uh, worried about that. I'm just just kind of going back to instinct and just uh, playing like I practice really. Justin, you said that you weren't trying to take too many hits early on in the season. I'm wondering, in the heat of the game, how hard it's to balance protecting yourself and trying to get every yard. I mean, is that something you're constantly thinking about, trying to avoid um, clean yeah. shots that are going to come at you? So, it, so this it has been kind of new to me. Like I haven't really never thought I've I've never really slid to to be honest in my life. So um, it's it's kind of new to me. But I just kind of think of this the situation before the play, and um, if I get the first down, if it's third down, then I try to go and get the first down, and then get down something like that. So you just have to really just go through the situation in your head and uh, just just know when it's smart to get down and when you have to take a hit every is now it, and then. Is it hard to play that way for you? I mean, does it have an, an uh, impact on it? No, not really. I, I think I've adjusted well to playing that way and just, just being smart because the coaches have really done a good job and just putting that in my brain and just emphasizing that uh, just to stay healthy and just not take, take a lot of hits. Are there any instances on Saturday where a play went differently or you did something differently? Because you were thinking in the back of your head before, during, or at, you know, a play, saying I need to protect myself. Uh, no, not really. I mean, um, you you just practice practice all, all of the situations in practice, and um, just just go over it and uh, just just kind of play. You you really can't. You, you don't really have uh, much time to think on Saturdays. You just have to just have to play the game. Right so. behind him, Dan from Eleven Warriors. Justin, for you personally, playing your first game in Ohio Stadium on Saturday, just. What did that mean to you? Did that experience live up to what you thought it would be? Uh, it definitely did. Uh, Buckeye Nation uh, showed out, and they, they came and supported the team. And um, I'm, I'm definitely glad to be a Buckeye, and uh, I'm just excited for the rest of the season. Obviously, you, know, you, you have a close relationship with Dwayne Haskins. You tied his mark with five touchdowns in your first mm -hmm. game. Just what does that mean to you to be able to accomplish what he was able to? Um, it's, it's definitely a blessing uh, from God, and um, I'm just, just thankful for it, the opportunity. Uh, the coaches have, have given me and uh, the other players trusting me uh, with uh, the leadership and all, and all that stuff. But it definitely means a lot. And I think I, I think I could have scored one more touchdown. So I, I didn't know that was a record. So if if I would have known that was a record, I probably would have tried to score one more to just beat him out. But, yeah. Did you hear from Dwayne about that? Uh, nah, not really. I mean, other than the tweet he tweeted, but not, nothing other than that. Yeah, uh, as you look back on Saturday, what was your favorite play other than throwing the ball out of bounds? What was your favorite play, uh, your favorite pass or whatever that you just kind of you just felt extremely comfortable? You let it go. You were in the moment, etc. I mean, I felt comfortable on a, a lot of plays, but I would have to say my favorite play was really the first touchdown because I don't know. It was just a moment for me, like when I was actually running the touchdown. I wasn't really. I was just thinking, like in the in my head, like this is surreal right now. And like. Uh, really, I was just thinking, um, like God, God is real, and like God has, I guess, blessed me with this opportunity. And I was just, just thinking, like, wow, like it was, it was just a wow moment for me. So, um, I'm thankful for that, for that. But that was probably my favorite play from Saturday. And one thing, are you, at, are you at all in some kind of weird way keeping up with what all the transfer quarterbacks are doing out there? Did you, did you, did you get to watch Jalen Hurts at all mm -hmm. when you uh, got home, et cetera? And just to I watched the game yesterday, and uh, he definitely balled out. So uh, yeah. that's my boy, and um, I'm, I'm happy for him. What does that say about college football though down the road that, J that, that you, Justin, that you guys can leave and have immediate impacts? What do you, what do you see um, coming? I think it's definitely, definitely a good thing in college football, and I think. Um, it'll hypen up the competition more, and I think uh, teams will be able to, you know, uh, just just get new quarterbacks and 
uh, rather than having a bunch of quarterbacks on one team, they'll, they'll kind of be able to spread out and um, better quarterback play will be, uh, I guess, around the country. So. And last question, front row right, Bill from the Columbus Dispatch. You mentioned feeling a little sore on Sunday. Uh, in a strange way, is that a good feeling for you? And just how sore were you? I was crazy sore. Like, it was my whole body, really. Like, so, so I went in the training room, and they said what hurts, and I just pretty much said everything. So um, I'm going to do a good job this week on treatment and just trying to get my body back right for Saturday. Because you didn't get hit a lot, I'm assuming, at Georgia. You didn't play a ton. Mm -hmm. you, know, you didn't run the ball to Houston mm -hmm. out. But probably high school, you probably outran most people. You probably yeah. didn't take a lot of hits. Is this the most sore you've ever been? Um, it's, it's, it's one of the most sore I've ever been. But um, I think I've been sore maybe a, a few more times in high school. Uh, just just because of the load I had to carry, but um, the the hits I took on Saturday they weren't that many. But when I did take some hits in the pocket, they were they were pretty big. So that first one, with the yeah, guy the first one it. it was definitely the biggest one I took, and I I think that had probably the most effect on my body. So was it good though for you to have to take that? It was good. I mean, just getting hit in a long time. So I mean, it wasn't good, but you know, I'm gonna have to get hit sometime. So yeah. Justin, thank you very much. Thanks, guys.